Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. Well, we're here with something brand new. Brand new, just to hit the market. Rick Rodriguez is best known for his time at General Cigar, of course. He was the blender and ambassador for the CAO brand. He left the company at the end of April and has partnered with a fellow former employee of General Cigar Company, Gus Martinez who will serve as the new company's president. That new company, West Tampa Tobacco Company. It's their new company. And they're coming out with two new cigars, the black and the white. Today we're looking at the black. Here it is, it's a Toro 6x52 and there is your density. As I'd say an average feel in the hand. Now the black uses an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper from a higher priming to give it a darker color and stronger flavor. Underneath that is a Nicaraguan binder from the volcanic island of Ometepe. While the fillers come from Nicaragua's Condega and Esteli regions. Cigar comes in three sizes, Robusto, Toro, and Gigante, and ranging from $8.99 to $10.99. Actually, that will tell you the average is $9.99, which is the price of this Toro. Now, I'm going to do something a little different, and I will give you a little spoiler alert. I'm, I'm reviewing the black. I also reviewed the white, but it will not be done in video form. You can see that re uh, review on the blog, and there'll be a link in this below that you can click to get there. The reason is I had both of these cigars several times this week, and by far the black was the better of the two. There are many reviews to get to, and in some cases when there are multiples from the same company in one line, or one uh, offering, uh, then I may do this from time to time. As a matter of fact, it'll happen again soon with another company. The black is the best of the two, in my opinion. And I want to give you that report today, but do check out the white on the blog. So let's get right to it. The new West Tampa Tobacco Company black. Toro. Now, I think it's interesting that both the black and the white use the same blend. Only the Ecuadorian Habano on the black uses a higher priming. And the difference in the two cigars, the way they look, is quite uh, shocking. Here they are. Here's the black, here's the white. Look, forget the bands, look at the colors of the cigars. Quite a bit of difference in the same, same wrapper. The black is a good bit darker with that higher priming tobacco. Is that not pretty cool and pretty interesting? Same thing, just different. All right. Got a good draw. As I said, the white review is up on the blog. Check it out. First flavors are pear, a sweet pear, brown sugar, some citrus peel, light, and a chocolate fudge type flavor. There's black pepper at about seven, so it's not a bad start. Interesting start when you start a cigar off by saying it tastes like pear, but it does. And uh, we'll see how it develops. So let's see what we have at first third.
third. Well, the cigar is sort of morphed a little bit. That's a nice looking ash, though, isn't it? I have to show it to you. Look at that. Ooh, yeah. All right, so we've still got your pear. Citrus peel, light brown sugar, chocolate fudge, dried nutmeg now, and black coffee. Good bit of things going on there. You really get the uh, chocolate fudge, which is sort of like a dark chocolate fudge. It doesn't have a lot of sweetness to it. And the black coffee, the pear and the brown sugar seem to be just dragging a little bit, but it, they are definitely there. And you get it right up front. But then there's a lot of uh, the fudge and, and coffee. And the dry nutmeg is interwoven between them because it's just dry. It's a dry nutmeg. Finishes a little pear and uh, citrus peel for the most part. Good lingering black pepper. I'd call it medium bodied at this point. But the cigar is pretty good. Uh, I rate the first third 92. It'd be nice if the uh, pear and brown sugar could get a little more elevated. But uh, it's right now we're at a 92. So let's just see how we transition if we do into the second third. Into the second third. The black coffee is coming out. It's a little more prominent than the uh, dark chocolate fudge. The pear and the brown sugar are decreased more than what they were in the first third. The nutmeg is a non-issue at this point. <clears throat> Medium to full body. Finishes quite a bit of black coffee. And a touch of citrus peel. Very good lingering black pepper. But the cigar seems to be drifting away. Drifting is the key word because it's not dropping like a rock. I will rate the second, third, 91. Uh, still not bad, but it's it's losing the sweeter notes. But the coffee is really coming out. So let's see what we have in the final third. to the end so let's wrap it up well the cigar sort of bounced back the way it was in the first third it's you've got your pear and brown sugar and they're not overwhelmingly sweet but there was an increase so it got back close to what it was in the first third i don't really think you have the nutmeg anymore The chocolate is pretty much a dark chocolate, not so much fudge-like, and plenty of black coffee. Medium to full body. Finish as just remnants of pear and uh, black coffee. <clears throat> Very good lingering black pepper. Cigar is rather dark. Big difference in this cigar in the white. I will take the score back to 92 for the final third because it's really pretty good. It's very dark, but it has some sweetness, and that dark chocolate makes it nice, even though there's an abundance of black coffee. I think you should try both and see what you think. Check out the review of the white on the blog. And you'll see where I stand on that one. I think this one is a tad better. The overall score is 91.67. So it's not too bad. Rick had a pretty good start with West Tampa Cigar Company. Let's, let's see where he goes from here. 
So that'll do it. The West Tampa Tobacco Company, actually, not Cigar Company. Sorry about that. The West Tampa Tobacco Company, Black Toro. 91.67.